welcome. In this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about how a function actually works. So what, what does it actually do when we create a function in Python, and uh, what's sort of the process? Uh, if we understand this process, it makes a whole lot more sense how we can use the function and why certain things don't work. So we're going to, we call this uh, the control flow. Uh, basically, what are the what's the procedure the computer executes? So, just as a real quick background um, for the flow, the first thing that happens is you create your function, and then the Python interpreter, quote unquote, sees the function uh, that it's being created, and it knows that because of the line that starts with def. So, if it sees def, it realizes that a function is being defined. Um, so then Python creates so uh, it's called a function object and places it in memory so that uh, you know once it's executed it's going to need to ba basically be able to recall that function in the event that uh, somebody wants to use it. So once it's created, it's executed, the object is created. If it detects any preliminary errors and uh, what's called an exception is thrown, an exception is sort of like an error, um, and so if there are other errors that it, it can't detect like you know errors with how the with the inputs that come into it. It's not going to detect that. It's just going to catch any. Um, well, we'll just say you know it, it's set up to detect certain errors and it'll only catch those. Now when we execute it, we might find that there are other errors, but nonetheless, um, it does kind of a quick check to make sure that everything that it expects to have in place is in place. And then uh, finally, if the function is called, um, this has to be after the creation of the function. Otherwise, if you call the function before it's been created, Python doesn't ha looks in its memory and it says, I, I don't know anything about this function, and it throws an error. Uh, Python then executes the function with the parameter or parameters provided if there are any. So you know, maybe you feed it uh, some sort of um, number of miles, the number of days that a, a truck is being rented for and that it's going to be used for. And uh, then it executes this function by the caller of the function. We, we, we say that the function is called when a user specifies that they want um, output from that function. All right, so let's jump over to uh, take a look at this and visualize how this process works. So I'm using uh, something called Code Sculptor. Uh, it's uh, free. It's uh, if you go to CodeSculptor.org, you can actually do this. And so basically, it's just the same type of window. You can you can type in here uh, the same type of code that you would in say a Python. Uh, Ju uh, Jupyter Notebook, and one thing we can do in here is go to Viz Mode. Okay, so I'm going to type, click Viz Mode, and that's Visualization Mode. I've got a comment here just indicating what, what this uh, this little sheet is doing, and uh, so I have a little function defined here, and I'm just calling this function test, that's its name, and I'm going to feed it an input parameter of stop. Uh, that's just a variable name that I chose to help me remember that that's going to be when the function stops. So all this function does is it's going to iterate through. So that's going to go for i, that's going to be the index, in the range starting at 0 and ending at stop. Okay, so that's the stopping point. And I have to do the plus 1 here because of the fact that Python, when it runs a loop, it will run till it reaches this quantity, but it won't actually execute that last run. So if I want to have this function stop at the variable stop, then and then I want it to actually run through that last iteration, then I need to do stop plus one, because once it reaches stop plus one, it doesn't do that final iteration. So let's see how this works out. So uh, here, I'm, all I'm doing is I'm, this is just a silly useless function, but what it's doing is each time a loop runs, it's going to take the current index value, and it's going to assign it to this variable that I've created called value. So value equals i. So each time it runs through, it's just going to take the current i and assign it to the variable uh, value. Okay, now if I run this right now, um, this is giving me a visualization of what's happened. So it's run through the code, it's gone from beginning to end, so it shows me that it's it's at the end of the, the the frame. And so what's happened here is it's created this object called test, and the object is a function. Okay, and then it knows that it's of the form test parentheses stop, so it knows that it's expecting a parameter called stop. Alright, so now I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to actually run this function. So nothing's happened. Notice that just an object is being created in memory and we haven't actually done anything with the function. So now I'm going to call it. I'm going to say I want to run this function on test uh, and I'm going to give it the input of 7. Alright, so right now the variable stop has no value, but when I call the function I'm giving it a value. Okay, so let's see how this works out. So I'm just going to run this and I'm going to go back up to the top. And we're just going to be able to uh, go statement by statement. So first thing that's going to happen is it runs through this lines 5 through 7 very quickly. And it tells me, okay, I've created, uh, I've created the object. It's, it's a function called test. It takes an input called stop. Now it's actually going to call this function. So I press next statement. 
All right, so now it knows there's a call to the function test, so it comes back up and says, oh yeah, uh, I have a function called test in mem my memory, so I'm gonna run through the steps on what the user has given me. So the first thing that happens is uh, test is called, the value of stop has been assigned now to seven because I've specified it down here. So now the function has a value for the variable stop. Okay, so now it's gonna, the first thing that's gonna happen here is I click next and it sees that there's a for loop, so it says, oh, okay, so the first index value is going to be this number here, it's zero, so i is assigned the value of zero, and now, oh, okay, he wants me to take the value of i and assign it to the variable called value, so runs the next step, and you'll see that value is assigned zero. Well, it reached the end of the line, so it bumps back up because it's no, it knows it's within a loop. So now it says, okay, what is, what's next? Well, the current index is i equals zero. I know that I'm going to go to the next index value, so the i value, when I press next, now updates to 1, jumps to the next line, and now line 7 is going to take that current value of i, which is 1, and assign it to the variable value. And it does it again. And now i is going to be 2, and look, as you watch down here, value is now going to be assigned to 2, and now i is going to be 3, and value is going to be 3, and i is going to be 4, and value is going to be 4, and i is going to be 5, value is 5, 6, 6, 7, 7. And now it knows that the current index value is, is 7. So it says, wait a minute. Uh, since, so that's why it's, as soon as it detects stop plus 1, okay, so now it's going to, it's going to, it's going to terminate. And it knows this based on the fact that we fed it the range. And we've said, you know, stop at, stop plus 1. Well, stop is 7. So notice that it didn't actually assign i to become 8 because the second it realizes that if it adds one to this value, it's at stop plus one, and it's not gonna execute that last run. So in this case, it, it, at, when the function's done running, it checks for a return value. Notice that we don't have a return statement in here. If there's no return statement, it returns something called, a, a value called none. Okay, that's a type of variable called none. So that means there's no return value from this function. So what did it really do? Well, internally it did some stuff. And if I just now put a return value in here, now it needs to be, notice the indentation, anything that's part of the for loop needs to be indented the same space. So you, if you did this, and you said return, it said we want to return the most recent value, and we ran this, it's going to say it, syntax error, bad input, well what's going on here? Oh, well I have an extra space there, so now if I run this, it's, it's going to operate a little bit differently. Okay, so I'm going to go back up to the top here, and iterate through this so you can kind of see what happens. Oops. Um, let's see here. Oops. So actually, notice how that is part of the for loop, right? I don't want the return value to be part of the for loop because once it reaches the return, it actually terminates the loop. So I want this to be in line with my for loop like that. That way it knows that it's going to do all this stuff that's between the return and the for, and then once it's done, it's going to return the, the, the value as the last step. Okay, so it's going to call that. There we go. There's my, my variables being assigned. Um, Okay, I actually needed to rerun that, so uh, because that that change that I made didn't didn't uh, get taken into account. So now it goes through. There's the for loop. I equals value equals, and now it's going to keep iterating through those two lines there until it reaches stop equals uh, I equals seven, and then once it reaches I equals seven, now it's like, oh, all right, well we're we're already at the stop point, so now we're going to jump to the next line that's not part of the for loop, which is the return, and now it's going to return value. So what does it return? Well, it says, what's the most recent number stored in the value variable? And it sees that that last number was seven, so it's gonna return the number seven and be done. So another thing we can do in here, and uh, I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna take this out, and let's say we wanted to define, uh, what we wanted to do is we wanted to add them up. So we wanted to add up all the numbers between, say, two numbers A and B. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to say for i in range a, I want it to start at a, and I want it to add up all the integers starting at a and add up all the integers leading up to b but stopping at b. So I'm going to do b plus 1 here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want to, this variable called total. And if I do total equals, well, what do I want to do? I want to take the current total whatever the total is and I want to add the, the, the next value in the next index to it. So basically what I'm doing is I'm repeatedly adding indices to this. So for instance, if, I'm just going to kind of create a comment over here, if a equals 
1 and b equals 5, what I want it to do is I want it to take 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. It needs to be able to keep track of everything up until that point. So once it reaches an i value of 3, it's going to be adding 3 to 1 plus 2. Once it reaches an i of 4, it's going to be adding 4 to 1 plus 2 plus 3. So what I need to do is I need to keep track of the total, and whatever the current total is, I need to add the next index to it and then reassign it to the variable called total. This may seem strange mathematically because this makes it look like um, zero, you know, something of the form 0 equals i if you kind of try to solve this equation, but you can't do that. This is just the nomenclature and the, the type of thinking a computer interpreter uses. So it's just a convention, and this is how we do it. Kind of strange thing to get used to. Okay, so if I do this now, and now I make a call to the function, so let's return, let's return total. And now I'm going to do atom and let's say 1 to 5. So I know that this should equal, should end up returning, let's see, 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15. I want this to return 15. 15 return. Okay, so I start running through this. I click run. And uh-oh, wait, what's going on here? It says undefined, error, local variable, uh, total reference before assignment. Well, wait a minute, I'm assigning it here. Well, that's not the issue. The issue is that we're assigning to this variable total the value of total plus the next index. So it's looking at this right here and it's saying, well, I don't know what I'm going to be, what that, what that value is. So before we go into this loop, we need to initialize this variable and we say, well, we're going to start it off as zero because right now the running total is nothing. There's no, there's no running total. We haven't added anything together yet. And that's going to solve the problem. So now we have no issues. We turn to the top here and we're going to run line by line. So it again creates the object called function. Now, now it sees a call to the function and says, oh, Adam, okay. It wants me to call the function. It wants me to assign the value of one to A and the value of five to B. Okay. So we're going to see that next. So we, we click through, all right, now it calls the function, it makes its assignments, it's, it now sees that a is 1, b is 5, it says, okay, total equals 0, okay, now we're going to iterate from a to b, and so it sets the first index as 1, it's going to take total, which is the current total, which is 0, it's going to add i to it, so 0 plus 1 means that the new value of total will be 1. Jumps back up to the top, index becomes 2, it says, okay, what's the current total? The current total is 1. The index is 2, so now it's going to do 1 plus 2, the first two lines right there. And so now total is 3, the index increments to 3, it's going to say what's the current total, it's 3, the index is i, so 3 plus 3 is 6, so that's those three numbers added together. Jumps back up to the top, now the total is 6, it increased the index to 4, takes total which is 6 plus 4 which is 10, so that's adding those numbers together. And now we have i equals 5, so total equals 10 plus 5, that's 15. All right, jumps back to the top and it says, all right, let me check the current index. The current index is 5. I'm only supposed to go from 1 to 5, therefore I'm done running through the loop, the body of the loop, and I'm just going to jump and look for a return statement. So it sees the return statement and it executes that line and it returns a value of 15 just as we wanted it to. Perfect. So this is kind of the control flow of a function. Um, each time you define a function and you run the code, it's immediately checking the function for major errors. If you then call the function and run it, it first defines the function, creates an object in memory, and then starts to step through uh, the actual implementation for a call to the function and now we can kind of watch it step by step. So obviously we're not actually seeing this when we run it. So this is, uh, I'm exiting now out of vi visualization mode and when I run this, uh, well I have to put, I have to uh, print here. When I print that line it'll just print the return value so it plugs these numbers 1 to 5 in into the loop and then it actually outputs the value of total. So all we really see is what we put in and what we get out. So hopefully this has been helpful to kind of get you acquainted with what the computer is actually doing because I think when you understand the physics of, of the underlying code, it makes a lot more sense and then you kind of know what types of things uh, can actually go wrong.